Hello everyone, this is Robert with Reading Through History and we're here with the next installment of EOI Review, Everything You Need to Know. Now in this episode we're going to be discussing the various different obstacles that were put in place to African American voting. Because what happened as Reconstruction came to an end, we had this thing called the Compromise of 1877. And in the Compromise of 1877, uh, the Democrats, who may very well have won the presidential election of 1876, but their candidate, Samuel Tilden, made an agreement with the Republican candidate, Rutherford B. Hayes. He said, if you allow me to be President of the United States, I will end Reconstruction. I will get the federal troops out of there, and all you Southern Democrats have to do is promise you will protect the freedoms and liberties and privileges of the African American population. And of course, the Southern Democrats were like, Oh, yes, we promise. We'll be good boys. Now, because of the 15th Amendment, they could not deny someone the right to vote on the basis of race. We know that. That's what the 15th Amendment said. So, they very cleverly found other ways to keep the African American from voting. And this is the topic of this mini lesson. So, this one will be called obstacles to voting. So this is the stuff you need to know. Prepare yourself accordingly. The first one is the poll tax. The poll tax is exactly what it sounds like. It very simply is a fee for voting. You have to pay it in advance. You have to have some sort of a receipt or ticket that proves that you've paid this poll tax and you can go vote. Now this, of course, at the very surface is disenfranchisement. You're basically making it very difficult for people to vote. Now this wouldn't just be African Americans. Poor whites would have a very difficult time paying this tax. Because if you're a sharecropper, you have almost no money or wealth, and it comes down to feeding yourself and your children or voting, people are going to choose taking care of their family over voting. So voting is today seen as a basic privilege that all law-abiding citizens should have. Wasn't so in the latter part of the 19th century and even well into the 20th century. Uh, if you were poor, this was a big time block in the way of actually voting. And you think about voter turnout today and how poor it is. Just imagine if you had to pay to vote. This is a way of you know, keeping the rich people in power. So, this will eventually be abolished by the 24th Amendment to the United States Constitution that outlawed the poll tax, at least in federal elections. Now, the way I read and understand this is you could still do this in local and state elections, you know, where there were no federal offices up for grabs, and this would be another way of keeping African Americans out of state and local politics. But, 24th Amendment got rid of it. But look at the date, 1964. This is 99 years after the end of the Civil War. So this went on for an incredibly long time. The second way they kept African Americans from voting, literacy tests. Now, this is exactly what it sounds like again. You have to pass a test demonstrating literacy before you can vote. Now on the surface this makes sense because you don't want people who can't read the ballot or understand you know, laws that are up for the vote if you cannot, you know, demonstrate literacy. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's not exactly what these things were designed to do. These were very explicitly designed in a lot of cases to keep African Americans from voting. Not that all the African Americans were illiterate. As you'll see here, there were other ways you could stop them from passing this test. First and foremost, they could have two different versions of the test. One of them is way more difficult than the other. The difficult one, you give it to the African Americans. Quite often it was a very dull piece or very complicated piece of some federal document like the U.S. Constitution or something and you would have to read it and then demonstrate that you understood what it said. Some tests, because there were no federal regulations on this, if you don't want a certain segment of the population voting, it didn't say you had to give them this test in English. They could literally throw it in French or German or Swahili or whatever language they wanted and throw it out there and of course you, if you could not speak the language, would fail. 
Or if all else failed, you could just say, oh, you didn't pass. You could recite this back and explain it perfectly, and the person administering the test could still say, oh, no, I'm sorry, you failed. So this was a great way that they used to keep African Americans from voting. I mean, it was very effective. Not great in the sense that <laughs> we're keeping people from voting, but it was great in the uh, you know, white supremacist view of, oh, we can just fail whoever we want to. And that's exactly what they did in a lot of cases. Now, as you can see, both of these things I described, the literacy test and the poll tax, could keep whites from voting. So they had to think of a clever way around this, and the clever way around it was the grandfather clause. Now, in the case of the grandfather clause, if you wanted the poor, illiterate, white Southerners to vote, because, you know, they'd vote Democrat, most cases, you could bring them in, you could, it's called grandfathering them in. Now, a lot of states use these, and specifically what it said was if you or your father or your grandfather could have voted on January the 1st, 1864, you can vote. Now, they even did this with the poll tax in some places. You know, if your grandfather or father or you could vote on this date, you do not have to, you know, uh, pay this tax. So the date they usually used was January the 1st, 1867. Now that date is very important because the freed slaves could not vote yet at that time. So if you're throwing out January the 1st, 1867, all these poor illiterate whites can get in because their, you know, ancestors, their parents, grandparents could vote on this date. And these grandfather clauses stayed in effect for a very long time as a way around these various laws. So, since the African Americans could not vote on January the 1st, 1867, they couldn't vote. Now, these laws are going to stay in place, particularly the literacy test and the poll tax, for nearly a hundred years. So I already told you how they got rid of the poll tax. They just passed a constitutional amendment. Well, what about the literacy test? Well, Lyndon Baines Johnson during the 1960s supported strongly for a Voting Rights Act. And that Voting Rights Act is going to come into effect in 1965. This eliminated the literacy test. So the literacy test is no longer valid. We're taking it and we're throwing that bad boy out. So no more literacy tests. Now a lot of people say this law didn't go far enough. And we're still fighting this battle today with uh, voter ID cards and stuff like that. But the literacy test, no longer valid. And it also said federal officials could register people to vote. Now this is very important because a lot of places were still finding ways to prevent African Americans from voting. So in this case, you could go to federal officials and they could register you to vote in all elections in your precinct. And just to show you how effective this was, before this law was passed in 1964 in Selma, Alabama, a town with a very high percentage of African Americans, only around 10% of the black residents in Selma, Alabama were registered to vote. Just four years later, in 1968, 60% of African American voters in red, eligible voters in Selma, Alabama could vote. So this was a very, very, very effective law. So that tells you everything you need to know about these three things, the literacy test, the grandfather clause, and the poll tax, and how they got rid of them. So if this video is helpful to you, just please subscribe below. We're going to do an entire series on these things and it's telling you everything you need to know to ace this U.S. History End of Instruction exam. So until next time, I'm Robert with Reading Through History.